Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric and Ryan from Tower Abuse. Today, uh, as you can see in front of you, you have the iPhone 4 and the Kin 2M, both from the Verizon Wireless Carrier. You've seen the Kin before, but the iPhone is new to our channel. Um, today, we're going to be doing a quick uh, comparison. We know it's not a fair comparison, uh, obviously, because they're from two different categories and they have very different specs, and even the price point is uh, very different. But we're uh, basically going to bring up the point that Verizon has changed uh, the way that they're, um, well, they don't have unlimited data anymore. The way that the, uh, the pricing model works on their data for their uh, smartphones, um, it's kind of a pain. Uh, it's going to be really expensive for those of you who didn't get unlimited before they changed it, which was today, July 7th. Uh, I'm sorry, yesterday, July 7th was the last day that um, they had unlimited data. So now they have for $30, $30 which was the same uh, as what they had for unlimited, is now two gigabytes of data. Um, for $50, you can get five gigabytes of data, and for $80 a month, which is crazy, you can get 10 gigabytes of data. Um, so basically, we're gonna be uh, overviewing the two phones in this uh, video. We're gonna be showing you, or showing you some of the uh, Just selling pairs. Some of the basic, the base features of the two phones to see like what you're gonna get if you go with the future phone on Verizon. Um, yeah, and if you can deal with like a future phone and save yourself some cash, or you want to upgrade to something like the iPhone or a Droid, something like that. Okay. So we're gonna go over the hardware of the device uh, first. Um, so basically, what we have on the two devices are a multi-touch capacitive display. On the can, we have a 3.4 inch display and the 3.5 inch display belongs to the iPhone 4. Uh, the resolution of the Kins display is 320 by 480 pixels and the iPhone I believe is 960 by 480. Uh, you can see there's a huge difference and you're gonna be able to notice that as soon as you take a look at the phone, uh, the phones next to each other. Uh, when the Kins by itself, it's not all that bad. It's still pretty bad, but um, the iPhone just has an unbelievable amount of pixels on the size screen and it's gonna uh, be crystal clear no matter how far you zoom in or how close your eye is to the, the human eye cannot recognize each individual that's why they call it the retina display but um, basically you're gonna see from the kin it is a pretty thick phone for what it offers um, it's kind of plasticky it's it's a deep it has a decent feel to it uh, it's obviously not anywhere close to the iPhone's build quality with the glass, glass and aluminum. Um, but the Kin, the only uh, complaint like for normal use of the Kin is when you're trying to use the touch screen, it's a, like a little bit flimsy because it doesn't have a strong lock on the slide. So as you're like sliding back and forth, you can like, it's, you can see, I mean, you kind of have to like feel it, but it's pretty bad. Uh, when the iPhone is in your hand, it feels sturdy. Uh, you're going to have really nice feel on the display uh, because of the glass not the plastic um, on the kin I mean you can see it's just got some basic stuff it does have a shutter button which the iPhone doesn't have but that will be coming in the iOS 5 update the plus button on the volume toggle will be able to use as a shutter button um, the bottom you can see the charging port uh, which I guess doubles as a USB port as well uh, to plug it in the computer um, here's a volume rocker and then you can see the 8 megapixel camera, which throws us into the other topic we want to quickly go over, is the camera. The Kin actually, believe it or not, has a 8 megapixel camera compared to the iPhone's 5 megapixel camera. But what we found is that the iPhone takes considerably better photos, um, and the Kin actually is really bad. Uh, no, the compared, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's bad when you think that it's 8 megapixel, which should be pretty good. Should be at least as good as the iPhone because it's a higher megapixel, but it's not. Um, it, all, it does have an LED flash though, which is nice, and the iPhone does as well. But the iPhone does have the front-facing camera, which the Kin is, uh, it's absent on the Kin. But um, the battery life, uh, the Kin, apparently, uh, it's Ryan's phone, but it lasts for a long time. Uh, on medium usage. On medium usage, it lasts for two, three days. No, like two days, like, yeah, two days at most two days at most, which is pretty good. Uh, the iPhone is pretty good as well uh, for being a smartphone and medium to heavy use uh, on Wi-Fi, on 3G, messaging, uh, 
occasional picture taking. Uh, it will last a solid day. Uh, you can never uh, be worried about it in a single day, but um, you can get up at eight o'clock and go to bed at midnight and it should be fine all day. It might be down in the 20% range. And if you use it uh, for just regular stuff, like I charged it not last night, but the night before that, and it still has 51% left. Um, but that was very light use because I had work. Um, so that's the battery life. We have the iPhone here, which everyone pretty much knows about. The same smooth OS that everyone has come to love. And on the Kin, you don't really have much. It's uh, the base applications. There is no App Store, which is a very large selling point for the iPhone, where you can expand your app collection with a variety of different things that can help you in whatever thing you're trying to do. And on the Kin, you don't really have anything except for you can add web pages to your home screen. That's about it though. Um, so next we're just going to compare some of the the applications that both phones have. The browser. We're going to do the browser. We're going to do probably music, messages, camera. Call quality we can talk about. We're not really going to show you that. Customizability. And yeah, that's about it. All right. So let's get started with the browser, which everyone probably wants to see. We're going to first boot them up and see which one wins. Okay, so now the browsers are booting up. The iPhone easily won. And the can tells you, it gives you a warning that you may incur charges. Alright, so here's the browser on the can. It's pretty basic, you just have the uh, text field up at the top and you have a refresh button and a favorite alright so we're gonna load Techno Buffalo up. There. got it in the history you got the dot com dot net dot org buttons up the top it's better than the iPhone there except I got one except you only have dot com except how many websites do you go on there dot org a ton Alright, just to note that we're on Wi-Fi because I don't have 3G on here, but it's basically the same thing considering they're connected to the same 3G towers. It's just how the phone handles what it's receiving, so it's going to be pretty much the same. Alright, ready? Yeah. Alright. So it looks like it loaded up the mobile version of the site, but still... Uh, we gotta see if what the kin does. I don't know if it'll load up the mobile or the um, regular site, but the iPhone has been done for a solid like 10 seconds. Kin's actually gonna look like it's gonna load up the full site, so we're gonna have to redo that test. <laughs> <laughs> Here, just uh, damn it. One, two, three, sag. Okay, so. All right, the iPhone is pretty much loaded the full site, and Kin's pretty much done. The iPhone's done. I mean, it's just yeah. There you go. The iPhone's done. Kin's still going, but it has some content loaded. What you're really gonna notice, even if they load it in a generally similar amount of time, you're gonna notice that the browsing experience on the iPhone is gonna be a With lot the better. The display, smooth pinching to zoom. I don't even know if you can. You can, but it's not smooth at all. Scrolling, it's it doesn't load it. The iPhone has it all already. No checkerboarding or anything. Right, so now we're gonna do the messaging app. Both pretty quick. All right, so they're actually pretty similar. You have the conversation. You can load more on the account, but it takes forever to get to the top. And the iPhone, you can also load, load earlier messages, and it's pretty quick, right? It's really fast. So that's that's a good that's a good feature. Um, from the messaging app, you can. On the iPhone, you can get a picture. I'm assuming that's what that means. I don't have the iPhone, so I'm not. Yeah, you can basically with this picture button, you can uh, send a photo or video, or you could um, take one and then send it right. So you could take one immediately, and it would just attach to the text message you're gonna send. 
So that's what that button does. Similar with the iPhone, you, or the uh, can you can add add video or add photo, but you can't add a pre-recorded video. You have to record it at the time you want it, which is really annoying. And another problem with that both the phones have is the timestamps on each message. The iPhone seems to do a better job of getting it on some of them or on more of them, but it can can go hours without stamping the time on the message, which is really annoying if you're trying to use it as a reference point. And yeah, that that might be something to consider. That's about it for the messaging. Wait, hold on. Okay. The Kin does not have a portrait keyboard, which is one thing to consider. Oh yeah, it doesn't have any touchscreen so, keyboard. So you have to use the hardware keyboard. Yeah. So there's no one hand texting. So the iPhone, you can normally like if you pick it up like this, you can use one hand to text if you have your other hand busy doing something else. But um, you can also, of course, go to portrait with the auto rotation feature. So overall, you can see that the iPhone is considerably better messaging experience. All right. So now I want to just talk about customizability real quick. Uh, the iPhone wins even though it has almost no customizability at all. You can change the background wallpaper. Move the apps around. You can move the well. You can move the apps on the can too, but um, you just there's overall more color on the iPhone. Downloading like your own apps kind of adds a certain level of customizability that the can doesn't have. You just have the single color theme throughout the whole device, and it, you only have four options for that. So, yep. The iPhone wins on customizability. All right, so now we're gonna do music. Obviously, Apple invented the iPod, so it's gonna have a pretty good music app. But the Kin actually has a decent app. It, it it's basically the same as a Zune HD. All right, I'm just gonna use my iPod because I actually have music on it. So you got the five things down the bottom: songs, playlists, and actually you can customize it with all of these. And it's a very smooth experience just scroll through it still is better than the zunes I think the only advantage on the zune is that you have the radio but it's not really that great because you have to have the headphones plugged in but it still is a pretty good feature phone uh, music player better than all the others